Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in my shop and welcome. We're doing Aramaki today. We're, we're focused on this project and I've ordered some parts. They're not here yet. I'm waiting for the carburetor, the rear sprocket and shocks, shocks for the back. So in the meantime, we have some other stuff. I bought a throttle. I bought it off eBay because I was looking for a nice throttle and all the throttles that I know split like so. It clamps around the bar. So it was a small photo on eBay, but I got it. And it's unusual in the sense that it's one piece. It doesn't split. There's an Allen screw here on each side. I'm going to show you how this works because I think it's pretty neat. And I've talked to a bunch of my motorcycle friends. No one's ever heard of, or the, the friends I talk to, no one's ever heard of a one piece before. So I'm pretty happy with it. That's how it comes apart. See, it's all CNC machined. It's anodized black and it fits together like that. I think it's pretty cool. I made some uh, handlebar end plugs. We're going to install those. Look how light they are. I drilled the hole way down there. We're going to see if those fit. I haven't tried them. And then working on the rear hub, we're going to build a, a back wheel today. This is the hub we worked on and I B blasted it. I took it down to Modern Motorcycles. I saw Murray and he's got a, a, a tank. It's, it's kind of like a a dye and it's supposed to make it look like like magnesium but I think the dye's worn out but it matches the front hub now so that's good I've got new new wheel bearings we're gonna press them in and I made a spacer this is the spacer with the, this is the Honda spacer it goes in between the wheel bearings and I made one out of aluminum now, last time on the front hub, when I made one out of aluminum, I got a bit of flack. People saying, you can't make it out of aluminum. It's going to compress and all that. So I made it, it two thou longer. This one is two thou longer than this one here. So it will allow for a little bit of compression if that happens. But I just changed the wheel bearings on my trials bike. And when I knocked out the bearings, guess what the spacer was made out of? It was aluminum. So... All you viewers saying that no, no one makes them out of aluminum. Well, on, on my TRS, it's aluminum. That saves weight, obviously, and obviously it works. So I think aluminum's okay. We're going to weigh these as well so I know how much weight we're saving. So that's basically what's going to go on today. There's a box here, and in here is the rim and the spokes. I haven't even opened it. Maybe we'll do that right now and take a look at what they sent me it's from california it's buchanan's they do a nice job like this Ooh, look at that that's pretty nice. So we're going to lace that up today and true it. And I got an old racing tire to put on there. So that's the menu for today. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to see how much weight saving got is, is happening here. This is the stock spacer that goes between the wheel bearings and it's 226 grams. That's 94 grams. Oh, so we saved 94.4. Uh, so we saved a lot. Saved 131 grams. That's a lot. That's uh, four ounces about, something like that. So I'm glad I did that. I was looking at the rim and it looks like we have a little bit of an issue here. Can, can you see on the bulge where the, where the nipples have to go? Can you see how it's all kind of rough? And on the other rim that I got off Buchanan's as well, it's really nice. So I think I'm going to make a phone call and see what they say, because this is, this is not looking great. Okay, bye. Take care, bye.
I phoned Buchanan's, I talked with Kenny, and apparently this happens sometimes. It's sort of hit and miss with Excel rims. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, because I always thought of Excel rims as super high quality, but apparently this happens sometimes where they intermittently, that was the word he said, intermittently I don't have this, it's called a dimple. And what you see is it's a pebbling effect. That's from when it gets pushed in. And on the front rim, it's all polished, but they didn't polish this. And so in between me and Buchanan's, there's a border. And so to package this up, ship it back, pay the border fees and all that, it's just not, not worth it. And the rim is still round and, and, and true. So it's high quality quality that way. He says that if I had a polisher up here, he would help me out with the cost, but I think I'm just going to build up the rim and make a note that Excel rims sometimes come like this. So we're going to build a rim. After we put in handlebar plugs, we're going to see how those work out. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, this one here, it's got a tube welded here, so that's going to make this tube a little bit oval and maybe undersized, so we'll see how we did here. I might need a bigger hammer. Oh, I see, it's going in crooked. That's, that's a problem. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to get a bigger hammer. That tube, because all of these were exactly the same size, that welded tube really, really makes a difference. So I should have made it smaller. That was a bit of work. I've got some nice grease, it's waterproof, Maxima. And I've got, I've got new wheel bearings here. So this is how you pop out the seals. We're gonna add grease, and then we're gonna pop them back in. So I've got, a, I've got a knife, it's not super sharp. And this is what you do. You pop it in like that carefully. See how it pops out? At the factory, I wouldn't say that's excessive grease at all. That's not much grease. That's a little bit. So we're going to pack it in there. And I know there's two kinds of grease. And may the best grease win. That's what I say. So that's not the same grease. This is kind of a whitish grease. So you're just going to pack it in. I learned how to do this years ago. There we go, that's one side. And the seal just pops right back in. And if you're careful with the knife, you don't get any damage. It's a shame about the dimples on the rim. I really did not expect that at all, but it's a race bike, so. But next time I order rims off, off Buchanan, I'll specify that I want the dimple to be unpebbled and polished. Now I know, so if you order rims off them, I would suggest that you specify that as well, because I did not expect that. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to install these into the hub. Tiny little bit of grease. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. And that's why you have to have a socket because it goes under the surface there, if you can see that. If I put 
a little bit of, of grease on each end, then that'll help to hold that just a little bit. So we have inner spokes and we have outer spokes. If you've never built a wheel, I know there's a lot of mystique around wheel building, but not really rocket science. I'm just self-taught. Nobody showed me, I just figured it out. So here's the difference in the spokes. Can you see that? These go on the inside of the rim and these go on the outside of the rim because of the bend. As they, as they roll the thread, there's some sharpness there. That's gonna go on the belt sander and that's gonna get rounded. Because what happens is as you're building the wheel, here's the hub, the, these spokes are here and it'll, it'll scratch. Even if you round it, it could scratch. So you have to be very, really careful. So I want to round this. So if you can see what's going on, these are all nicely, nicely rounded. There's no, there's no sharpness there anymore. That's the spoke lube done. Okay, these are the outside spokes, so they go in last. So the next step is to look at the rim. And you want to start at the valve stem hole. And then you look at the angle where it comes off each side. So on the valve stem hole, these two spokes come this way and these two spokes come this way. It doesn't really matter which way it goes. See how the spoke holes are offset? This one here, if you put it through, see how it's this spoke hole is in between these two. So on the bottom where it comes in, it's going to go to this one, let's say. And then this one here will come down like that. So that's how you start, that's how I start the lacing pattern. No, it goes on the inside. See how the spokes are lined up for the holes? That's what you need to know. That's how it works. So I put the spoke in every other hole. Okay, so that's the first side done. Okay, so now we put the spokes into this side here, every other hole. All the spokes are gonna come this way. This is where you can, you can scratch the rim if you're not careful because these, as you put them in, they want to rest out on the rim. So I skip, skip two holes and I go to the next one. If you look at, at the center line of the hub in between the flanges and the center line of the rim, this rim is way down. So that's, that's not helping me. So if I take a couple of two by fours and I put them up like that, now it's much more in the center and that's going to make it easier. And I put the rag on this so I don't put scratches if there's anything in the two by four. I skip two holes. 
Then I put in the bottom one, then I put in the top one. Okay, so these ones are all in, so I should be able to pull the hub around. So this is where you feed in the spokes. This is where the wheel starts to take form, when you've got the opposing spoke helping to hold. I took a screwdriver, do you see how I sharpened it? This was some years ago. And that holds it in the, it can't, it can't wander off. So that's, that's really handy for when you want to just loose, loosely tighten the spoke. So we'll just go around here now and add spokes. I've got lots of thread showing here. See, see right here. I'm not, I'm not making them tight at all. I've never had anybody watch me build a wheel before. And I think I did mention, I'm not an expert. I just build wheels for myself. So there we go, there's a wheel. We've got a loose hub in there, but now we have to make it run true. So get the wheel chewing stand out. I made this wheel chewing stand, I don't know how many years ago, maybe a couple decades, can't remember. I take a piece of masking tape and I, I mark the spoke right beside the valve stem hole and that lets me know where I am when I'm coming around. So I, I find that useful. I got a magnetic base that I've had forever and I take out the dial indicator and I've got a rod. It's a quarter inch rod and from somewhere I got a piece of, of tubing that slips over it. So I can, I can put this up to the rim and if the rim hits it, it spins it, it doesn't mark the rim. But if you just had a rod, that would work as well. So this is what tells me if I'm running true. You don't need a dial indicator. I know some people might say, oh, I need a dial indicator, but I don't think so. So we're not actually at this stage yet because I need some more tension in the spokes, but you can see the idea here now. You can see how it wobbles back and forth. So I'm going to try and put a little bit extra tension in. I'll go around this way a little bit. I can just tighten by hand still. When you're building a wheel, you want to bring it up to tension really gradually and equally. You don't want some spokes tight, some spokes loose. So that's where the experience comes in. Let's just see how we're doing here. It's out a little bit, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch. Not, not too bad. And then when I turn this around like this, now you can see what it's like up and down. Actually, it's not that bad. So we'll, we'll start working on those. See right there is a low spot. So from here to here, it also ends at the well. See here is the weld. Can, can you see there? It's been ground down, but that's the weld where they join it. And that low spot ends right there. So what we're going to do is, is to tighten up. I'll do it by hand first. And then we'll add a little bit of tension on there. I was taught one quarter turn at a time. And that's a good rule of thumb. 
This one's still loose, so I've got a little bit more. See right there, there's a, right there, see how it goes up and there's more of a gap? You're going to have to live with that. You can't fix that. Okay, so see there where it's touching? I'm going to work on that area right there. And I find it's best to do the up and down first, and then once you got that right, then you can concentrate on the back and forth. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's not perfect this way either. So let's change this around. So I'm just touching right there. So I need to tighten these spokes on this side. Make sure this one's not too tight. So I'm not putting much, much force on it. It's just a little wrench and you can see I'm just a little bit of pressure. Okay, so it's, it's reasonable now. What we'll do is to put the wheel into the swing arm and we'll check for the dish. We should have equal spaces from the, equal space on either side from the rim to the swing arm arms. So let's give that a check, see how close we are. We're probably not close, but let's find out. I made up a Delrin spacer because I don't like the backing plate. We're gonna make a new, a new backing plate, so I did some calculations. We'll see how my calculations are. Oh, not bad. So I should lock it in the in the forward uh, position because I don't know if the slots are exactly the same length. Okay. So got the real wheel running pretty true. So what we'll do is to. See the spacing, can you feel it just touching? And over here, ooh, look at that. So it really has to come over a long ways. So I have to loosen these spokes on the hub side and pull it over onto the, onto the drive side. How long can that take? So what I need to do now is I'm going to go, I'll, I'll tighten these. I'll do one quarter turn all the way around and then I'll loosen one quarter turn and then I'll do the same thing again and then we'll put it back in the swing arm and we'll check. Okay, now we loosen. That's why it's nice to have the masking tape because I get there and I know that I've been around one whole turn. So here goes the second turn. Okay. Yeah, that's still got more to go. check here it's very very close it's just touching it's just a little bit I think that's okay I'll call that the thumbs up 18 inch rim band I'm gonna put that on Put some talcum powder on the tire. So 
Okay, rim band looks good. And the tire's been in the sun, so it's about as warm as it can get. So I'll put a little bit of talcum powder in here as well. See these marks? There's an orange and a blue. That's where you want, that goes next to the valve stem. I guess they have some kind of a, a balancing machine. And this is the lighter part of the tire. That's my understanding. And the valve stem has some weight to it. So that's what you do. I'm going to put the tube inside the tire and then put the tire on. That's what someone suggested to me. And we're going to try it out. Might have to let a little air out. There you go. See, you can just move it to where you want. This is my, my goop. It's hand cleaner. That's all it is. The tire is nice and warm from being in the sun. So that's, that's a good sign. Hard to put on a cold tire. Oh, nice. Hey, hey, hey. This is an all race tire, so we don't have to balance the wheel because the bike's not going to get ridden with this on it. At least, well, maybe up and down the block or something, but not, not in a race situation, so. There we go. Let's see if it pops. There we go. You saw it pop up. It didn't make a bang, but it popped up. On the racetrack, you're not allowed to use plastic valve caps. They all have to be steel or metal anyway. That's one of the rules. So there's the steel valve cap. Starting to look like a bike. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you've enjoyed watching me, me build up a wheel. And next week we'll make a, a backing plate, I think. I don't like the Honda backing plate. Mitch and I like coffee. Please buy us a coffee. Stay safe. See you next week.